Hi everyone, my name is Kate and I'm a PAC support representative for Roughwear. Joining me today is my coworker Katie and my coworker Bailey. Katie is our product innovation developer here at Roughwear. And Bailey is one of our office dogs who helped Katie in her recent research around our cooling gear and um, the cooling technology that we use in our gear. So we're here to learn a lot from Katie about her research and the data that she's found. But Katie, before we dive in, why don't you just give us an overview of when we say cooling gear, what are we talking about? We love adventuring with our dogs. Sometimes that takes us to really hot places mm -hmm. and we still need our dog to stay cool to maintain our adventure in the dog's comfort level. And there might not always be a stream or a lake we can dive into or shade we can hide behind. So we created the Swamp Cooler family that allows us to bring a cool environment with our dog on our adventure in the heat. You get the product wet and put it on our dog and it creates that cooler environment. That's great, Katie. So we have these products that are designed to keep dogs cool and you have done some interesting research. What's this research all about? What question were you trying to answer? In the history of Roughwear, the Swamp Cooler product was shown at trade shows and other in-person events where there was a giant tub with all of the Swamp Cooler products in them and then given to people to try out for a few hours. And that experiential learning got people on board to understand and see how the product works. But now that we're in a larger company and there are people coming into the retail store that don't get the experience with a wet Swamp Cooler vest to put on their dog in the hot sun, we want a way to quantify how the Swamp Cooler is working and show that our experiential learning of that hands-on with the product actually translates to a number and a value we can say that the Swamp Cooler family increases cooling for dogs. So the research that I set up is with seven different dogs with different coat types. That was another big interest of how does the Swamp Cooler affect dogs from huskies to short-haired pointers. Mm -hmm and does it affect them all the same? Mm -hmm. And also how can we quantify how much cooling effect there is on a dog? Like, what experience is the dog having with that garment on? We used two different methods to quantify what the dog's experiencing. One was through a thermal imaging with a FLIR camera, which is a forward looking infrared thermal camera. And that gets the thermal picture, if you will, or the heat that is coming off of the dog as well as the surrounding environment. And then we also did sensors that measured the heat loss off of the dog. So how fast the dog was cooling from the surface of the fur to the garment or to the air. And Bailey was one of the dogs in your research. Just curious, I mean, as, as y'all saw, Bailey is a golden retriever. Where does her coat kind of fall within like the lineup of dogs that you tested? Bailey was in the middle. Okay. We had a Husky and a Bernese Mountain Dog, mm -hmm. Denali okay. and Bruce. And Bailey is a medium coat dog. Um, <laughs> who is loving this uh -huh. Pacific ring. <laughs> so Bailey's in, Bailey's kind of there in the middle. Yeah. Okay. And then we also had a few other medium coat dogs and several short haired dogs, mm -hmm. Nova and Vilas, a mix and a German short haired pointer, mm -hmm. and then also a wired coat Sturgill. Okay. Uh, Griffon. So definitely a wide variety of coats. So that makes me feel really good. Um, just knowing that this is something that has been tested across a variety of dogs. So let's kind of dive in. I'm really curious. So you were able to essentially see how the cooling technology was like in our swamp cooler year was working on these dogs. How were you able to see this? Yeah. So the setup was really key to this whole process. And taking a laboratory style research approach where we can control the environment to observe differences in the product itself. We used our video studio to set it up with a controlled environment. We knew what the ambient humidity was as well as the ambient temperature. We had a controlled temperature of the water that we were using to wet each of the garments and also a time frame that was consistent for each dog that they had the garment on, that they were reaching their ambient or acclimatized temperature, and then tested two to four of the garments on them. 
Okay, so it sounds like you had these cameras, you had these sensors, you had your lineup of dogs. I'm sure there were many treats involved so many treats. as well. <laughs> what is next? How, how do you go about doing these tests? Let's walk through Bailey's experience of coming into the room and modeling for the Swamp Cooler family. Okay. Yeah, because Bailey um, can't tell us about her experience, so you, but you can. Yeah. So Bailey comes in and hangs out in the room for around 10 minutes. She's getting acclimated to the temperature is really what I'm looking for is her to be at her natural temperature in the room. Then she's also getting accustomed to the room too. So she's smelling around, seeing what other dogs are there, what sort of mail have they left, <laughs> and where are the treats mm -hmm. or toys in mm -hmm. baby's case. Yes. <laughs> then we take a picture of her with the FLIR camera. That shows us the image of what her baseline temperature is. So what is her temperature at the ambient or room temperature? Mm -hmm. We have, as part of the setup, a black backdrop, which reduces any light or reflective heat coming off of all of the lights that a studio room has. We also have a tub of water to dunk the garments in to get them wet. So then after we take Bailey's first picture, we do a baseline read of her fur temperature or surface temperature of her fur and her baseline heat loss. And that gives us our baseline reading so we can then quantify how much cooling the garments provide to Bailey afterwards. Mm -hmm. and then after 10 minutes of her at in room temperature, we put on the first garment after dunking it in water and wringing it out, took a picture, then waited five minutes for her to get more accustomed to that garment. For it to kind of take effect. Yeah. yeah. And then put the sensors against her fur and the garment. So in between, okay. there was one on her back and one on her chest, and then took the garment off after 10 minutes of wearing. Took another picture. So we got her surface temperature, what the FLIR imagery is reading, and then let her acclimatize again or acclimate to the, temp the room temperature for another 10 minutes before going on to the next garment. And you did all all garments in the Swamp Cooler line. Yeah. So she would acclimate in between those. You would bring her kind of like back down to baseline mm -hmm. and then test another garment. Okay. Yes. So Katie, you mentioned a specific camera. I think you said FLIR. Is that right? Yeah. What is a FLIR camera exactly? A FLIR camera is a forward looking infrared camera. It allows us to see the temperature of the dog with the garment on or without the garment on. So we can have a very clear visual image of what the cooling garments are doing. Okay, and what, is, what exactly does a person see when they're looking at the images? With the thermal imaging, it's a range of purples and yellows. Yellow means that it's hotter or white is the hottest. Okay. We set our bounds to 100 degrees as the hottest and 50 degrees as the coolest that the camera picks up. So the backdrop is showing a pinkish purple and the dog looks orange. Mm -hmm. There are more purple aspects of the dog, like the tail, which is cooler because the tail doesn't have a lot of blood flow or heat generation. Mm -hmm. And then the mouth is very yellow, almost white, mm -hmm. which is a much hotter portion of the dog. And then as we keep going down the spectrum mm -hmm. of images, the purple color comes onto the dog's fur where the swamp cooler was as we're removing that garment showing that the dog's fur temperature is cooler. It's now cool, right. And then 10 minutes later, after the garment has been removed, there's still that purplish mm -hmm. shadow from the swamp cooler being worn. So Katie, this is all really interesting stuff. And I'm just curious to find out ultimately, what did you learn? Well, first, the cooling gear works. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> so we have a very clear visual image that we can see the cooling gear in action and that the dog is cooler with it on. The sensors also tell us that there is a greater rate of cooling off the dogs while they have the gear on. So we also learned that the cooling garments vary across coat type. Compared to their baseline, Nova, who is a short haired mix, was two times cooler with the cooling gear on. Sturgill, wired haired, was five times cooler with the cooling gear on. And Bailey, medium coat, was six times cooler with the cooling gear on. And then with Denali, a double coated Husky is eight times cooler with the cooling gear on. Oh, wow. That's really good to know. That's a question that I often get asked, you know, customers with dogs with a thicker coat, they want to know, like, will this cooling gear actually work for my dog? Yeah. And it definitely does. It gives that extra boost where with Huskies, they're really good at 
controlling their natural temperature, mm -hmm. but putting a cooling garment on them does help them to stay mm -hmm. cooler. So Katie, you've done all this really great research, but it's all been in this controlled environment here in our studio. So how can you take what you've learned and how can we apply that to the experience that our dogs are gonna have out on the trail? There are always gonna be a lot of different variables for our dogs on the trail, whether that's the temperature, humidity, amount of sun versus shade, water that they can access. Mm -hmm. But what we found is that the cooling gear makes our dogs cooler when they have it on. Depending on the environment and those variables, we may need to recharge it more and help them to support that cool environment. But regardless, but, they're staying cool. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Cooler than they would be without it. Yes. So that's great because that means for me, my thick coated Husky mix, I can know that this is working for her. I can take her out on longer hikes. I can cool her down more and know, have like peace of mind. Exactly. And this is gonna help you stay out there longer mm -hmm. and is one tool that we can use to keep our dogs cool. In addition to giving your dog plenty of water to drink, maybe boots if the ground temperature is really hot and also plenty of breaks in the shade if there is any shade and making sure that they have time to cool off on their own in addition to the cooling garment. Yeah, for sure. I like that. One more tool in our toolkit. That's great. Well, thank you, Katie. This has been really insightful. You've given us a lot of data. Um, I like how we were able to kind of go behind the scenes and see what this testing has been like. So thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, for you all watching, you know, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. You can email bark at roughwear.com. That's B-A-R-K. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, until next time, have a good one.